In our first example, we're asked to derive the rate law for the decomposition of N2O5. And here's our overall summary reaction here uh, on the basis of the following mechanisms. So these are the one, two, three, four elementary reactions with their associated rate coefficients we are to use in deriving a rate law. And we'll need to apply the steady state approximation here in order to do so. So what's the first thing we need to do? First we'd like to check to make sure that our mechanism is in fact correct and that if we add it up uh, it'll give us the overall summary, summary reaction. Um, to do this we write, you'll notice these first two elementary steps, one is just the reverse of the, the second one is just the reverse of the first uh, reaction. So this is actually a so-called reversible step or an equilibrium. So we write that down and then the other two so-called irreversible steps are placed underneath and we add them up. So there's a bunch of cancellation that we can do here before we'll get the overall result. Uh, get rid of three uh, from reactants and product sides until we're left with two N2O5s on the reactant side and one, two, three NO2s, no, four NO2s and an O2, which is here, and that is in fact our summary reaction. So at least this mechanism is uh, consistent with the summary reaction. Next, uh, we need to write the reactions in terms of the species in the summary reaction, and we do this in order to uh, help identify what the intermediates are, although we can we can just simply look at our summary reaction and see which chemicals are not found in that reaction and those will be the intermediates. Nevertheless, the overall rate of this reaction can be expressed uh, in, with regards to the three chemicals involved in the summary reaction. So here we are, the rate of reaction, we've got a stoichiometric coefficient of 2 over here for hydrogen pentoxide, and it's a reactant so it's minus so uh, the overall rate of reaction will be minus a half of the rate of uh, the net rate of formation of N2O5, which will be negative since it's consumed. And so when we multiply by a negative, we get a positive result and so on and so forth. So uh, in this way, we can relatively easily identify the intermediates. There are only two chemical species. If we look in the mechanism over here, there's only two chemical species that are not uh, involved in the summary reaction, that's NO3 and nitrogen monoxide. Now uh, we can derive a mechanism by selecting any one of these three chemicals to, to uh, focus on. But as we shall see, uh, some are easier to work with than others. So let's see if we can figure out beforehand which is possibly the easiest of these three rates to focus on uh, to derive our overall rate law. So here's our summary reaction. Uh, these are the three different uh, chemicals that we could uh, derive uh, an overall rate for. Um, that's our mechanism and we've noted that these are our intermediates. So let's have a look then at each of them. Uh, the net rate of formation of N2O5, if we look through our mechanism, we see the first reaction it's being consumed. The second reaction, uh, nitrogen pentoxide, is being produced. The third step, uh, it doesn't appear, and the fourth step, we have it appearing as well, being consumed. So it's produced in step two. So uh, it's an elementary reaction, so we can immediately write down it's the rate of this reaction. It's going to be Ka dash by the concentration of NO2 by the concentration of NO3, this intermediate. And it's lost by these two steps here, so we put those in this unimolecular decomposition here into NO2 and NO3, and uh, this last decomposition, no, oh, this reaction here is also the a, a loss, a reaction that 
uses up in 205. So we end up with this as our net formation rate for in 205. Uh, if we were to work with this and try and derive a rate law using this particular species, we notice that we need two, we need to know the concentrations of two intermediates. Okay, uh, good. Let's uh, have a look at NO2. Basically, let's see if we can find a simpler uh, reaction to start working with. If we, N205, we need two intermediates to solve for in order to get the rate law. NO2, we have a look at NO2. It's formed in the first reaction. It's destroyed in the second. And uh, in the third, it's both destroyed and formed. So it's no overall result. Uh, NO2 is, however, formed in the last uh, reaction. So let's have a look. We've got a formation step here. So it's unimolecular decomposition. So that is appearing. It's destroyed. Uh, in the second step, so we have that there, there's the destruction. And uh, finally, in the third step, we notice uh, we form three NO2s, so three times the rate of this reaction will be the correct term to add in here. Again, here we still need to know NO3 and NO. So, yeah, um, Either one of these looks relatively complicated to get a rate law from. Let's have a look at our last one, uh, the rate of formation of O2. Uh, it's only produced in, well, one reaction. Uh, it doesn't appear anywhere else. And uh, so this is our rate of its formation. Uh, there's no destruction, no other channels to form it. Okay, and we only need to know the concentration of NO3 to derive a rate law from looking at the rate of formation of O2. So it looks like, compared to the other two species, this one would be easier to work with since, in principle, we only need to know NO3. Uh, so let's, let's focus our efforts on this then. So uh, we write the rates of formation now of the relevant intermediates. Uh, we need to know the concentration of NO3. And in order to do that, we're going to have to invoke the steady state the approximation. So let's have a look at the rate of formation then of NO3, because we need this guy to solve this uh, uh, rate of formation here. Okay, so here's the rate of formation of NO3. Let's have a look at our mechanism. It's formed in step one. So there's this term. It's destroyed in step two. So that'll be Ka times the concentration of nitrogen dioxide and NO3. So Ka dash. So that's this, this, uh, this term. And it's also destroyed in the last step. So, uh, oh, is that correct? Uh, NO3, no it isn't. It's destroyed over here in this, in this step here. There's no NO3 in the last step. So it's destroyed in the third step and there it is there, Kb times these two. Now invoking the steady state concentration, we say since this is uh, an intermediate, we're going to say that it's going to be at a very low concentration so that this very overall net rate compared to the other rates uh, that we're looking at will be very close to zero. So we set that to zero and now we can solve for the concentration of NO3, which is found here. So NO3, now, this concentration can be brought back and plugged in up here. Okay, so we substitute that into our expression for the net formation rate of oxygen. Okay, so here's our net formation rate of oxygen. When we substitute in for the concentration of NO3, we, we get this, and it's relatively straightforward to derive a rate law now uh, are based on focusing on the net rate of formation of O2. So we obtain this. Uh, we write it in terms of the rate of reaction next, and we note that the rate of reaction is in fact directly equal to the net rate formation rate of O2. So this is our rate law with our rate coefficient being 
equal to the ratio of these uh, the overall experimentally observed rate coefficient will be this expression here so according to this mechanism the rate of reaction is first order it's first order overall first order and first order with respect to n205 on nitrogen pentoxide Okay, but maybe we weren't so prudent as to uh, have chosen uh, to work with this, uh, work with the net rate of formation of O2. Maybe we uh, decided to choose um, nitrogen dioxide instead. Well, if we had have done that, uh, then we would also need to know the concentration of this intermediate, nitrogen monoxide. And I guess our life is going to be made more complicated now because the expression for its formation is more complex. But if it's, but nevertheless, if we follow through the algebra correctly without making any mistakes, we should get exactly the same result as we found for using O2. So, okay, let's let's do that then. So first, we need to know. When we, uh, when if we're going to work with the net rate of formation of N2O5, first we need to know the concentration of NO. We've already derived it for NO3, uh, so uh, let's do that. NO is an intermediate. We're going to invoke the steady state approximation by setting its net rate of formation as zero. We look at the uh, mechanism and we see that only the the third step and the fourth step involve this species so we see it being formed here and destroyed here so here we are seeing it being formed kb times the concentration of these species is the rate of this reaction and it's being destroyed here so there we are go now we can solve for the concentration of no and we find this Unfortunately, we see that the concentration of NO involves the other intermediate as well. So, uh, wow, this is now making life quite complicated for us, but nevertheless, it's doable. So there's the uh, first intermediate we, we solved for when we were looking at the net rate of formation of O2. We have that already. So we plug that in and we obtain for the concentration of NO, in fact, just a constant. This uh, set of um, rate coefficients over here uh, uh, expressed in this way. So, okay, fair enough. Now that we have the concentrations of our two intermediates that we need when we want to solve for the uh, rate of formation of NO2 or the rate of formation uh, of N2O5, um, once we have these, we can plug it into the expression. So we're going to uh, first then uh, focus on solving for N2, uh, the rate of formation of nitrogen dioxide. So here's our original expression we derived earlier. Uh, we can rederive it. It's uh, not too tricky. It's formed first in this first step, uh, destroyed in the second step, and there's, it's formed again in the third step. And we see we need NO3 here. So we're going to have to substitute in this expression down here. And we need NO. So we're going to substitute in this expression down here. So we do that. And we've got a bit of a mess. Uh, but nevertheless, we can uh, rearrange this. Okay, so we notice that Ka times the concentration of nitrogen pentoxide is common in all three terms. So we take that outside. And then we want to put everything on a common denominator, which is this expression. So we do that. And now we can simplify. So we end up with this expression over here. And in terms of the rate of reaction, which we need to write, we note that we have to take a quarter uh, of the rate of formation of uh, nitrogen dioxide in order to get the rate of reaction we do so and we find exactly the same result as we did with O2 but with an awful lot of more work. Okay so uh, just for completeness let's have a look at the focusing now on the net rate of formation of N2O5 say we really wanted to make 
uh, life difficult for ourselves and we pick this one so let's work with that guy and see if we get the same result so this is the overall net rate of formation of nitrogen pentoxide we see it being destroyed in the first step but being reformed again in the second this is just an equilibrium okay so there's the it being reformed with the second step and that's being destroyed in the first and it's also destroyed in the fourth step step C so uh, we have that term there as well now we substitute in for our two intermediates here's our expression for the concentration of NO3 and here's our expression for the concentration of nitrogen monoxide again we see common to all of these is Ka times nitrogen pentoxide so we take that outside put on a common denominator so we do that and simplify and we find minus two times uh, this expression here and writing in terms of the overall rate of reaction we know that we have to take minus a half of this rate to get the overall rate of reaction and when we do that we find exactly the same expression as we found for the other two uh, working with the other two chemical species in this reaction. So as you can see, it didn't really matter which particular chemical we chose to work with in terms of getting the rate law, right? rate law being overall first order and first order and nitrogen pentoxide. But it is important to judiciously choose the correct uh, chemical in your summary reaction to, to concentrate on because if you choose uh, if you don't choose wisely then you end up may end up uh, having to do a lot more work to derive the rate law and uh, you can see the algebra involved it's very easy to make an a make a mistake here uh, and you get the wrong result so you always want to go for the easiest path okay so that's the end of that example in the next video we'll tackle this particular example uh, so follow on to the next video in the series to see how we can derive a rate law for this decomposition of ozone using the proposed mechanism below.